Alright, welcome to this tutorial series on MySQL. Now in this series I will teach you basically how to work with a MySQL database. I'll teach you the syntax of MySQL queries, how to use PHP to work with it, and finally we'll use PHP and MySQL to build a sample application using the techniques I will be teaching you. Uh, what kind of application? You'll find out. So, MySQL. Uh, unfortunately, we'll have to get the boring part done first. What exactly is MySQL? I'm going to make this a bit annoying right away. MySQL is a so-called relational database management system. And, ah, there we go. What is a relational database management system? Well, let's get started with what a database is. A database simply stores data. That's not too hard to understand, I think. But what does it mean for a database to be relational? Well, it means data is stored according to uh, the relational model. So, what is this relational model? Just speaking ahead, a database consists of various tables. Each table consists of one or more fields which store a certain type of data. These fields um, of different tables could potentially be linked to each other. So say you were making a form and you had this forms table and a topics table. You could uh, put these fields in it, form ID, title, description, and for the topics, you would do a topic ID, a form ID, and a title. Now, as you see here, I put emphasis on the form ID in the forms table and the form ID in the topics table. Basically, it means that whenever you create a topic and store it in the topics table, it will have a form ID that relates to a form in the forums table. So say you had forum number 5 and you would store a topic in the fifth forum, the forum ID in the topics table would be 5 as well. So basically this means forums table and topics table are related to each other. If this all seemed like Chinese to you, don't worry, it'll get clear as we get through the tutorials. But it's pretty important concept to understand. However, there is more. MySQL runs as a server, allowing access to almost any number of databases. That's really all you need to know about that. I already made things boring enough, I think, with this uh, relational model explanation. So how do you use MySQL? Well, you have to install it first. If you install a package like XAMPP or WAMP or MAMP for Mac, it will most likely uh, come pre-installed for you. Um, if you are developing on an online web server, MySQL is also often installed for you. Uh, a last option is to install it manually, but this can be a bit difficult and it's just not necessary but if you want to customize your installation this is an option I won't cover how to do this though now in order to work with databases you need some sort of interface PHP my admin is probably the most widely used and most useful tool to do this you have the same installation options as with MySQL you could install it manually, but it often comes with uh, with an online web server or XAMPP, WAMP, etc. With PHP My Admin, uh, you can quickly create and set up databases. I just realized I miss an A here, but that's not important. Um, and you don't need to do scary stuff like this. Now, what what this is is uh, SQL code. Uh, SQL, Structured Query Language. That's the language we'll be using when we work with MySQL. Uh, this looks very daunting. 
you also don't really need to know this because you can easily do this within PHP My Admin. All right, so we have set everything up and we know what MySQL is and what it does. So we could start creating a simple database, but first I want to talk to you about data types. I won't do too many, just these six. The ones you will likely be working with most often are int, varchar, char, text, date, and date time. An int field contains an integer, it's as simple as that. By default, this integer can be up to 11 characters long, meaning it can store up to huge numbers. You're never very likely to use such large numbers, so you can often put this to be smaller. A varchar field simply contains a string of up to 255 characters. Notice how I said up to. This doesn't need to be 255 characters long. It can even be 60. And even then, when you set it to be at most 60 characters, it can also be 30 characters long. And this is how a char field is different. A char field has a fixed amount of characters in it. If you say it has a maximum length of 40 characters, it needs to have 40 characters. So this is very useful when storing encrypted passwords, for example. A text field is basically a varchar field, except for like 65,000 characters instead. So this is useful for blog posts, news items, etc. Uh, a date field simply contains a date, as simple as that, a month, a year, a day, that's all there is to it. Date time is basically the same, except it also includes time, so an hour, minute, and second indicator. So we basically have all this done. There's just this, MySQL keys and indexes. You have primary keys. Uh, this will also become clear to you later, by the way. I just want to get all the theory out of the way immediately. Um, a primary key is unique and cannot be null. This means it needs to have a value and often increments automatically. Uh, a foreign key is used to enforce the relational model I talked about. Um, we won't be using this because it requires the InnoDB engine. It's another one of those uh, buzzwords you really don't need to care about for the sake of these tutorials. But I do recommend you look into it after this. And a unique key simply means that every entry in your database must have a unique value in that field. So say you're creating a user account system. Uh, where you would not want users to have the same usernames, you could make this unique uh, to make sure that uh, you don't have multiple users with the same username. Um, that's really all to it. See? Blank. Uh, after this tutorial, so in the next part, we will start creating a database. So, see you there.